Hello all. In this video, my plan is to give you a little bit of extra help dealing with citing your sources for essay number three. One of the major problems I saw in essay number two was the quality of the sources in terms of the in-text citations and the work cited entries. So to give you a bit of an extra help on that, I've created a PowerPoint that I'm going to go through here that has examples of the various types of sources that you'll see for the documents that are relevant to essay number three. <clears throat> essay number three covers units seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let's go ahead and get into this PowerPoint now and learn what we can learn about citing sources for this next essay. The first thing that I need all of you to understand is to determine what type of source it is you're dealing with. Once you know what type of source it is, then you can use the models in this video and in the other citing sources PowerPoint that I did for essay number one to help you put together more correct citations and works cited entries so you don't lose a bunch of points on your essays just from that. <clears throat> so for unit 7 through, that should say 10, sorry, not 11. For unit 7 through 10, all of the sources fall into the following categories. They're either a book by a single author, a video, a single page on a multi-page website, or an item in an edited collection. Those latter two are the ones that crop up the most frequently. So pay close attention to that. There's only a couple of videos and there's only a couple of books by a single author. So I'm going to do one example of each to get you started with the hopes that you'll see the pattern and you'll be able to apply it to different sources that I'm not doing examples of. So let's look at an item in an edited collection first. The Herodianus document, the Ammianus Marcellinus excerpt, and Procopius from Unit 7, the primary documents on homage and fealty, and on fief contracts from Unit 8, all fall into this category of source. So let's take a look at the modules to see what I'm talking about here. So if we open up the Unit 7 module, this is an item in an edited collection, as is this and as is that. So those three, Herodianus, Ammianus, Marcellinus, and Procopius, are items in an edited collection. And from Unit 8, if we look at the modules, these two that come from the book Translations and Reprints from the Original Sources of European History, these are items in an edited collection as well. So pay attention to how I'm citing these so that way you can apply this information to all of those types of sources. So getting back to the PowerPoint, <clears throat> for the in-text citations, you need three pieces of information. The original author, the year of the original publication, and the page number. I don't need the author of the collection from which this source comes. I need the original person who constructed and who wrote the work. So let's use Herodianus as an example then. So for the in-text citations for Herodianus, they're going to look like this. Parentheses, Herodianus, comma, 2004, and parentheses. There's no date given in this source, therefore you can leave it out. If the source that I've given you to use does not include a date when it was initially and originally created, you don't have to put it in either your in-text citations or in your works cited list. So there's no, no, no year given for when Herodianus work wrote the book called History of the Emperors. So leave it out and just get the page number. The page number comes from the top of the page and not the scroll bar at the bottom. So let's look at Herodianus for a second to illustrate this. It comes from a website called the Internet Archive. It's an entire book of primary source excerpts that have been scanned in. If we zoom in, here's the document. This is how Didius Julianus bought the Roman Empire. I talked about this when we discussed this in person in Unit 7. I discussed this document. So this is linked into Canvas for your benefit for this next essay. Here's the book that he wrote, History of the Emperors, but there's no date when he wrote it. And the page number is up here, 203, 204, so on and so forth. Not this. Do not use these pages. Use these pages up here. Let's get back into the modules and let's get back into the PowerPoint.
The works cited entry for an item in an edited collection is more detailed because you have to do two things. You have to give credit to the original author of the work, and you have to give credit to the collection in which that excerpt can be found. So again, let's use Herodianus as an example. So your works cited entry for the text that I just showed you a few seconds ago will look like this. Herodianus, that's the name of the original author. There's no date given for when he published that book, so you leave the date out. Then the book that I, the title of the article, the title of the book that he wrote it in is History of the Emperors, that's in quotation marks. Then the word in, Readings in Ancient History, Volume 2, that should be in italics. Then the name of the editor, edited by William Stearns Davis. Then you're going to give me the page range taken up by Herodianus and his excerpt. Then the publication information for the book, Readings in Ancient History, which is in Boston. And then the publisher is Allen and Bacon, and it's 1913. Where can I find that information you might be asking? I'm going to show you. So once again, let's go back to Herodianus. He's right here. We're going to open his document up. And it takes you directly to the source itself. So it's Herodianus is the author. The book that this excerpt comes from is History of the Emperors. Where can you find all the other information, though? Well, now you've got to use the scroll bar. You click and hold that circle. You bring it all the way to the left. Let's shrink that down a bit. And there you go. There's the title page. Readings in Ancient History. William Stearns Davis, he's the editor of this. There's the copyright date, 1913, from the PowerPoint. There's the publisher, Allen and Bacon. If there are multiple cities utilized as the publisher, take the first one. Hence, Boston. And then again, 1913 is over here. So then that gives you Herodianus, the original author, History of the Emperors, the original book that he wrote it in, in the book that it came from, Readings in Ancient History, Volume 2, the editor of that book, William Stearns Davis, the page range taken up by the entire excerpt, the place of publication, the publisher, and the year of publication. And I just showed you where to find all that information. It's all right here. Okay? Okay. And so all the rest of these, Amianus Marcellinus, the in-text citations and works cited will look the same. Same with Procopius. And same thing with these two documents. They will all follow that same format that I just outlined for you in the PowerPoint. <clears throat> Notice, too, when I did the works cited entries, the hanging indent. All lines after the first should be indented five spaces. When you're typing up your works cited entry, just type it until your Word program or Google Docs automatically drops it. Don't just take and copy and paste this because it's not going to fit on your page in either Word or Google Docs. It's going to look weird. Just type until it automatically wraps to the next sentence and then afterwards shift it in five spaces. Okay, let's go to a book by a single author. The excerpts in both units 8 and 9 from Judith Bennett's book, A Medieval Life, are books by a single author. As well as the Anselm versus Gaunilo document that I had given you to read in unit 9. That's also an excerpt from a book by a single author. For both of these, for the in-text citations, once again, you'll need the original, you'll need the author, excuse me, the year of publication, and the page number. So let's use Judith Bennett as an example. So the in-text citations, if you're going to cite a medieval life, will simply be parentheses Bennett, 1999, and the specific page you got the note from that you're citing, and then close parentheses. Notice that the punctuation, the periods, go after the citation because it's included in that sentence. It's not part of the next one. The work cited entry for this type of source is a lot easier than for an item 
in an edited collection because there's only one author to deal with. So the works cited entry is going to look like this. Bennett, Judith, because you reverse the names. 1999, that's the year it was published. The title in italics, A Medieval Life, Cecilia Pennyfatter of Brigstock, circa 1295 to 1344. Then the place of publication, Boston. The publisher, McGraw Hill. The year of publication, 1999. <clears throat> Once again, where did I find that information? Good question, students. Let me show you. Let's look at the Judith Bennett, uh, the Judith Bennett if I could speak, text. I'm going to look at it here on Canvas. I'm not going to download it. So in this first excerpt, I put this information at the back of it, at the, at the end of the source. So right here. That's the title of the book. That's the author. At the bottom of this page, there's the publisher, McGraw-Hill. Again, lots of different cities. Boston's the first one. As far as the year goes, I gave you the year in the item's title in the module, 1999, right there. So that's where all that information, that's where all this information can be found. All that's on that, on that very last page. And then the year is in the title of the item in the modules. <clears throat> and then so the Anselm versus Gaunilo text will be the same thing. When you're citing the author on that, you're just going to give me the author of the book it comes from, not Anselm and not, not, and not Gaunilo, because those excerpts are included in a larger book by a single author. So just give me the name of that author. Use the scroll bar, because it comes from the Internet Archive, get the name of the author, and just use that. If you make a mistake on that and you cite Anselm or Gaunilo, because, honestly, because it's coronavirus semester, I don't care. I'm not going to take any points off. So, that's fine. All right, let's look at single pages on a multi-page website. This is, as you can see from that first bullet point, probably the most frequent type of source that you'll see for unit three or for uh, essay number three from units eight through ten. So the document: five reasons why the Roman Empire collapsed, and the Suna from unit seven. The Ancient History Encyclopedia articles from Unit 8, there's two of them, one on feudalism, one on manorialism. The Ancient History Encyclopedia article from Unit 9 on the life of the leisure time of an English aristocrat. The Charter of Loris in Unit 9. The David Tulloch article from Encyclopedia.com. And all of the items, all six of them from Unit 10, are all single pages from multi-page websites. One of the documents in Unit 10 was Frederick II's um, Statute in Favor of the Princes. So let's use that as our example. That comes from a document that you'll see quite frequently for the rest of this semester, and it's the Medieval History Source Book. It's an electronic collection of sources run by Fordham University and managed by professors there. And they've collected primary and good secondary sources as a resource for teachers and students. So the in-text citation for Frederick II's document will look like this. Frederick II, the author, 1231, the year is given not only on the title of it in the module, but when you click on the actual document itself, you'll see the, type, the year there. And then because it's a website, it does not have page numbers. So instead of page numbers, you'll give me the name of the website it comes from, which is, <clears throat> I put the wrong title in there. It's the Medieval History Sourcebook. My apologies for that. I typed the wrong title. It's the Medieval History Sourcebook. So Frederick II, 1231 Medieval History Sourcebook. The work cited entry looks a little bit different because you have to include a couple of different things. Because it's an electronic source, you have to give me a URL, <clears throat> as well as the last date you looked at that resource. So again, it's Frederick II, 1231, the original author, the original year. And then the title of the document is in quotations, Statute in Favor of the Princes. And then the name of the website, Medieval History Sourcebook, again, my mistake, Medieval History Sourcebook, is in italics. 
Then after that, you give me the last date that you accessed that resource. I'm filming this video on April 3rd, so therefore April 3rd is the date that I last looked at that. And then you'll just copy and paste the URL from the website itself and into your Word document or Google Doc, and then therefore you have your citation done. <clears throat> So all of those sources in this first bullet point are all cited that same way at the bottom, and they're cited in the same way for the Works Cited page. Now remember, I told you this before, but recall, the articles from the Ancient History Encyclopedia, the items from this source at the very bottom of the page, there's a little button that says Cite This Source. If you click on that, it'll open it up and it'll show you what the Works Cited entries will look like in Chicago style, and you could just copy and paste those into your Works Cited page. So let's look at the Ancient History Encyclopedia article. So it loads up, and it loads up. Here we go. Let's scroll all the way down to the bottom. There it is. Cite this work. Click on it. Boom. Chicago style is the one that I want. The name, the title of the specific article in quotation marks, in italics, the name of the website, last time. You will not use that date, though. You will use the date you last looked at it, and then you will give me the URL, which you'll just copy and paste from up here. You'll just copy and paste that into your Word document or into your Google Docs, and you're all set and ready to go. But then all the rest of them, the Charter of Loris will be cited the same way, the David Tulloch article from Encyclopedia.com will be cited, cited the same way, and then all the other five items, William the First and the Doomsday Book, um, King John and Magna Carta, the Fourth Lateran Council canon, those are all going to be cited the same way. For some of them, like the Fourth Lateran Council, where there's not a single author, it's a group, you'll cite the group as the author. So it'll be Fourth Lateran Council will be your author that you'll use in the in-text citations and in the Works Cited page. Last one to do are videos. There's two of them. There's the crash course video we saw in class on Islam, and then there's the Filthy Cities Medieval London video that you watched on your own, hosted by uh, Dan Snow. <clears throat> so let's use crash course as our example. So for the in-text citation, you're going to give me three pieces of information. In this case, because they're videos, they don't really have quote-unquote authors. I mean, there's someone who wrote a script, but I don't expect you to, like, peruse through the credits to find that person. Just use the name of the person who presented the video. In this case, his name is John Green. He tells you his name at the beginning of the video. For the other video... Um, Filthy Cities, Medieval London, the presenter's name is Dan Snow. Pretty easy to remember. You're also going to give me the year that it was originally put online. For the Crash Course video, you've got that. It's a, it was initially put on YouTube, and if you look just under the video, you'll see the uploaded date. That was 2012. For the other video from Dan Snow... I don't believe that there's a year given on the website Daily Motion for when it was originally filmed. So again, skip it. Then, since these are videos, you're going to give me the name of the video because there's no page numbers. So you give me the name of the video. In this case, Islam, the Quran, and the Five Pillars. Yes, I know that makes for long citations for that source, but I didn't come up with the title of the videos. They did. Talk to John Green, send him your angry emails, don't talk to me about that stuff. For the other one, <clears throat> the name is Filthy Cities Medieval London. So that's what the title you'll give me. As far as the work cited entry goes, again, we'll start with the name of the presenter. So in this case, it's John Green. We know the year, because it's on the video, 2012. Then, in quotation marks, you'll give me the name of the specific video, that you're watching. In this case, Islam, the Quran, and the Five Pillars. Then in italics, you'll give me the name of the site from which you saw that video, which in this case is YouTube. For the other one from Dan Snow, it comes from a website called The Daily Motion. 
Then once again, you'll give me the date that you last looked at that video. Again, because I'm making this video on April 3rd, that's the date I'm going to use. And then you'll copy and paste the URL into your Word document or your Works Cited page. So that's how you do those four types of sources. This covers all the sources that you will use potentially in units 8, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for essay number 3. As always, though, if you have any questions about that, please do not hesitate to email me and I will give you whatever help I can with citing your sources. Also, if you're going through the Unit 8 material, the Unit 9 material, the Unit 10 material, the Unit 7 material for the content of your essays and you have questions or concerns, also, please don't hesitate to email me either through Canvas with my SC4 account or my Gmail account both of those two are found on the first page of your syllabus. And if you don't have that syllabus anymore, there's a copy of it right here in the very first module that you can look at and it'll give you those two email addresses. If you want me to look over some specific sections of your content to give you some feedback, so let you know if you're on the right track or not, again, don't hesitate to email me. The theme here is, especially now that this is an online class, that college is closed, that there's no way you can see me face to face anymore. The name of the game here is if you have any problems or questions, you have to email me. That's basically the only way you're going to get in touch with me. So don't hesitate to do so, and I'll do the best that I can to answer your questions and address your concerns in as timely of a fashion as I possibly can.